Get to the back. Water, water. Is everybody out? If I, if I sat quiet, I could recall dozens, if not hundreds, of horrific scenes that I've been to over my career. CPRs on infants and children. Uh, some lived, some didn't live. Uh, horrific automobile and motorcycle accidents. Burn victims. You know, this is something that is a very dangerous job, but probably the more likely killer is going to be what's going on in your head and not what's going on out in the field. I got into this business. It didn't matter what you saw. You were expected to just deal with it and move on. The things that we see on a daily basis, some people just aren't geared to be able to see those. The community sees is a lot of times the fire truck driving down the road, lights and sirens. We could be going to a fire, we could be going to an accident, we could be going to a hazmat, we could be going to a bomb threat, we could go be going to a 911 medical emergency. Fire departments today are referred to as all hazards response organizations, which means that if a rocket lands in your front yard from the planet formerly known as Pluto, who are you gonna call as the fire department? PTSD is a mental health condition that is triggered by a terrorizing event. You can experience it from either living through it or witnessing an event. It can last anywhere from months to years if untreated. If you've been in this business for any amount of time, you have some degree of PTSD. It, it has more to do with are you uh, manifesting any symptoms of it? Is it impacting my ability to do my job or is it impacting personal relationships? We wouldn't have had these conversations 20 years ago. Back then it was suck it up and that's what most of us know it as is don't let them see anything that bothers you. Um, you have to put on your happy face and go to the next call and just suck it up. There's sort of this bravado that came with being a firefighter. With that came this sort of um, impression that if you were struggling with mental health, it wasn't something that you could be open about. Unfortunately, I can think of a lot of people that that's probably what ended their career um, because they wouldn't get the help that they needed and they turned to other things. They turn to drugs, they turn to alcohol. 47% of firefighters have thought about suicide. That's 25% greater than the general public. That's huge and it doesn't need to be that high. I would say any of the calls that I think bothered me the most were usually the ones that involved kids. But I have seen environments where I didn't expect were in my community. And kind of seeing kids grow up in these environments, um, I think that was hard for me because there's nothing I could do, you know, about that. I was just responding to the call. I worked at cardiac arrest on a six-year-old boy. Um, he happened to be three months older than my oldest son. Um, that, was, that was pretty tough. Um, it, was, it was hard to go back to work. Anything with kids is usually a big trigger for any of us. And so most of the time, our medics or our firefighters have young kids. So anytime you can relate that call to anything in your personal life, it can trigger those events. And if you don't deal with them, it can affect the way you go to your day-to-day -day business. I probably should have went in and sought professional counseling. Um, I had a ton of people that I knew that worked all over the state. I spent tons of time with them on the phone. Um, that was that was probably that was probably one of the hardest calls to to get over. There's plenty of calls where I I can look I can remember every single detail of every single part of that call. So. I mean, we've, we've ran cardiac arrest where I've did chest compressions on people for quite a while, trying to get them back. Some we get back, some 
We don't. There, you know, there's sometimes that, that I'll take stuff home because my wife is my best friend, my best supporter, my best advocate. And there are times that she's the only one that can speak truth and, and healing into that current situation. But if every time I encountered one of these, I took it home, it'd be no different than walking through the house with muddy shoes, right? Um, it begins to then erode the family life, and I don't want to do that. So. Like, I think a lot of first responders do have this like emotional um, sort of empathy for the people that they serve, but there com comes a point that you there's so many calls and so many people that you're going to see that need your help, and some of them you're not going to be able to help, that you have to remember that you're just there to do what you can and do your job. And once the call is over and you leave the residence, it's something that you kind of have to let go. And understanding that we're not going to be successful every time. We're, we're put here to make a difference. And we're making a difference for somebody else. We're not making a difference for us. When we leave a bad call, usually on our way back to the station, we'll immediately talk about that call, which is starting the process of processing that event in your head. Um, people don't realize that just talking about it is one of the ways that we do process it. I've surrounded myself with uh, mentors, uh, men and women in the fire service, some with more experience, some with less, but people that I respect that um, I try to do the best I can to Talk about these calls. So I've seen a lot of good people leave the career field. That if we could have if we could have got them some professional help, maybe they wouldn't have had to. You know, I would say probably in the past five years, uh, fire departments have been very progressive about getting more firefighters to seek counseling specific to the job. If you're a member of the International Association of Firefighters, which we call the IAFF, they have a ton of resources, which also includes our, uh, the Center of Excellence. And that is a hospital treatment center that treats mental illness, it treats uh, chemical dependence, any um, dependence-related issues. Other than that, we have, there is a helpline for heroes, but here locally in Grand Prairie, we're working on a resilience program with our police department we work hand in hand with them, and we have a peer support system that I mentioned. Um, we have six members on the peer support team, as well as we have grant funding that helps us with the education and treatment for our own people. So what, what we have in this area is called a critical incident stress management team. And if we see that a firefighter is, is having trouble with a particular call, we can activate that team and have them come out and give them the opportunity to to speak. But the nice thing about Wichita Falls Fire is we do have a group of chaplains. Um, some of them are retired firemen, so they've been in the same shoes that we're in right now. Um, some are pastors. So we have that at our disposal 24 7. So anytime we feel like maybe we need to get, you know, a more senior guy in here or somebody that can just speak words of encouragement to that guy. Uh, we have that available to us that we can call. Sometimes when you're dealing with mental health, they're not ready to, they're, they don't want to speak until they're ready to speak. Um, in the fire service, most people are type A personalities. So we don't like to be pressured into anything. So oh, I think in some communities, yes, you will have like specific like post-traumatic stress counselors that are trained for first response or maybe were previous first responders. Um, here, I've noticed that the best professionals that I have been able to talk to were my lieutenants or my supervisors or my um, fire chiefs. Firefighter dinner table is a huge gathering place for us. So whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, we usually sit around and talk a lot of smack. And a lot of times that camaraderie is just what you need to get to get those feelings and those thoughts out. The camaraderie is, is unbelievable. Everything we do around here is based on a foundation of trust. And when you work in an environment where trust is that important, it creates a bond like no other organization can, can replicate. Oh, it's one big dysfunctional family. We all like each other. We all 
joke around, but at the end of the day, I mean, this, those other seven guys in there, they're your family. You mess with them if you like them, and <laughs> I mean, oh, it's we're all friends up here for the most part. <laughs> we all joke. It makes the day go by. It makes you get through with the grief and all that a lot better. I just think um, as young people come up in this profession, we have to normalize getting help and seeking help and taking care of yourself mentally as well as physically so we don't have the statistics that we've had in the past with the high suicide rates, high divorce rates. Um, the more we normalize that, the better off we're going to be in the future. Everybody's going to have that kind of anxiety and fear of what they're going to see or what that could do to their life. But I think the people that really are called to this kind of job, the calling like outweighs the fear. I knew being a firefighter, I was always going to be trying to help somebody just like hit home for me. So I was like, I think this is perfect. This is exactly something that I'd want to be a part of. Probably the coolest thing about being a fireman or a paramedic is every day it's something different. You, you may go to 10 calls and get dispatched for the exact same thing, but more than likely, nine out of those 10 calls are gonna be completely different. Mark Twain said the two, the best days of your life are the day you're born, the day you figure you out what you were born to do. And for me, I figured out this is what I was born to do. And uh, you know, my transition from those days as a young 18 year old volunteer to being an old career firefighter, you know, there's a lot that's transpired throughout that, but I'm absolutely convinced that this is, this is what I was put on this planet to do. I don't know what the world would be like without us, but I'm glad that we are here. You call 911, somebody is showing up. So that's that reassurance to the city that on my worst day, somebody's coming to help.